these commuters are unaware. Their every move is being watched by next generation surveillance cameras. We can pass in the vehicles and tell what type of vehicles it is. And also it could detect the bicycle list, motorcycle list, and even recover their trajectory. Dr. Xu runs SenseTime, a company helping China make surveillance cameras smarter. We provide the embedded system that put AI technology inside the camera to help the camera to recognize face, recognize objects, and actually turning original video streams into structured data. This includes real-time crowd analysis and even mood analysis. And China is the perfect testing ground. At this convenience store, registered customers enter with facial recognition. They buy items using their phones. I like this store because I hate staff following me around. It's more direct. It's convenient. Stores like these are symbols of what China calls smart cities. Intron in Ningxia has become a model example. Here residents enter compounds with face recognition and track buses on their phones before leaving home. Transport can then be optimized based on user data. They can take masses of user data and also other state data, like private company data, and figure out ways to make cities more livable, um, but also make cities more secure. And Under the banner of security and convenience, China's government now has data on almost all of its tech-savvy citizens. And technology, for the most part, has made cities better. Concerns, however, arise when technology itself begins to govern. And that's already happening. Alibaba's Sesame credit system uses purchasing data to rate people's integrity, and it may offer a glimpse at a more sinister future. By 2020, China hopes to roll out a nationwide government-controlled credit rating scheme in which people may be scored based on measurements like how quickly they repay loans and whether or not they jaywalk. Dan Epstein, TRT World, Beijing.